What is going on world? What's up YouTube? It's Zero here. Today I'm bringing you guys a brand new episode of the 8 Below Show. Welcome everyone to 8 Below. Thanks for being here guys to the best gaming related show here on YouTube. And I'm super excited about our episode here today. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's get into it. A YouTuber I used to watch a lot, guys, and I really just loved his content from a multiple perspectives. Not only was he a hilarious YouTuber, but I also think that he was just a really good content creator overall, creating, you know, from music videos to diss tracks to uh, just vlogging. Really awesome YouTuber, in my personal opinion, that being Rice Gum. And I want to talk, guys, in this segment of the show about what happened to Rice Gum. Where is he? Is he going to come back to YouTube at some point or another? in the future and I would love to hear your guys' thoughts about this in the comment section down below. So let's get into it. So guys, if we go to Ricegum's official YouTube channel, he has amassed over 10 million subscribers and the last time that he uploaded guys was over a year ago was when he uploaded and um, uh, he the last video he uploaded was my ex-girlfriend called me and we picked up and so obviously it's been a long time since he's uploaded and you know maybe he just needed a break because if you go to his Twitter account, his official Twitter account guys, he hasn't tweeted on since July 3rd of 2021 and so when you look at that and you start kind of trying to piece together you know what's going on here with rice gum why hasn't he uploaded at this point in time it could be a number of things number one it could be some of the backlash that he's gotten over time for some of his youtube videos it could too be you know maybe he's been burnt out over the course of time you know he's made a lot of money from youtube and just being a personality being in the spotlight for quite some time maybe he just wanted to be you know kind of take a back seat and no longer be you know one of the focal points um obviously i mean having you know 10 million subscribers on YouTube guys you've got a lot of eyeballs watching you and you know I think rice gum if it were anything and you know it was probably partially burnout it was probably partially that he just wanted to take a break from from YouTube I think those are probably the most you know, uh, logical explanations for it. It could very well be something totally different. Maybe there's something going on in his personal life. Obviously, he's very close to some of the guys over at FaZe. Um, you know, it, it could be something that's going on with his family or some of his friends or whatever the case may be. It's tough to say, but do I think that at some point or another, Rice Gum will, will return. And I do believe that, guys. I think that there's going to be a massive comeback for him. I think the same thing with like even guys like FaZe Banks, who are massive on the YouTube scene, as well as just on social media. And they've taken a break. Not so much from social media, but more so from the YouTube scene. I think that those guys are going to be definitely coming back in a major way. I think they've got plans. Maybe it could be as soon as 2022, we really start seeing them ramp up production on you know different uh, awesome content, things of that nature. Um, you know, obviously FaZe Banks is still doing Mom's Basement with Keemstar. So I think that that's definitely something that obviously, you know, could be coming at some point in the future here. We'll have to keep our eyes kind of set on that and kind of just see what happens as time goes. But I do believe that he will be coming back at some point or another. If we look at Ricegum's Social Blade account, we can see, guys, that he's still one of the top ranked, you know, YouTubers out there in the world. And he's still getting views consistently every single day. He's getting, you know, on average, he's getting about 30,000 views a day and he hasn't uploaded in over a year. He's getting weekly averages of over 200,000 views. I mean, and he's almost getting a million views per month, just not even uploading. So really, when you think about it, guys, he is still making money off of the videos that he's created over time and he's still getting subscribers. It's pretty slow at this point in time. He's not really losing subscribers, not really gaining subscribers either. It's kind of just middle of the road. If he started uploading again, he would probably be getting a significant amount of subscribers once again. He was he was growing in such a major way, guys, but he really struck while the iron was hot and obviously, you know, was grinding really hard on, on his YouTube channel and, and, you know, obviously with, with streaming and things of that nature. And now he's just kind of slowed down. And look, at the end of the day, guys, I mean, he's gotten such a huge following at this point in time that I can understand, you know, from burnout and things of that nature, possibly wanting to just take a break from the YouTube scene for a period of time and even social media. That being said, though, guys, 
I have no doubt in my mind that Rice Gum will come back at some point or another. And when he does, he's going to be right back to where he started. He's going to be uploading some probably awesome content, hilarious content. We need more Rice Gum. And so I would love to see him at some point or another. But what do you guys think happened to Rice Gum at this point, though? Like the hiatus, do you think that there's going to be a long extended hiatus? from YouTube and from even social media at this point? Or do you think it's just something that at some point or another, he's going to come back? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. And for more content like this, guys, stay here with Zero TV. Halo Infinite, without any question of a doubt, guys, has been a smash success at this point in time. From the multiplayer to the campaign, guys, it has just been overwhelmingly up incredible. And we can all say that at this point in time, Halo is officially back. Now it's up to us as the community to keep this thing rolling. And the same thing goes from the developer's perspective as well, continuing to keep, you know, striking while the iron is hot. And Halo Infinite, guys, I am so excited to see that, you know, this is a title that's, you know, back and better than ever. But that being said, it's not fully polished. It's not fully finished. There's going to be things that they have to work on along the journey. One of the things, though, guys, that a lot of us have been talking about, something that could be really special in a number of ways, is Halo Infinite's Forge Mode. Forge Mode in the past, guys, was like a sandbox, and you could really create whatever you wanted within that within that area, that, um, you know, that Minecraft-esque type of style in the Halo universe. And Halo Infinite bringing in Forge Mode in this day and age could be something absolutely incredible. Guys like Dr. Disrespect could create their own maps that could potentially be, you know, put on the, you know, HCS and, and you know, from a competitive perspective. So I want to talk about, you know, where is Halo Infinite Forge mode and when can we expect this to come out? Let's get into it, guys. So in an article coming to us from Nico Perungo of Gfinity, Will you be able to build maps and share them online like in previous Halo games? Well, Halo Infinite has managed to capture fan interest thanks to the excellent response to its multiplayer beta, as well as the campaign delivering excellent reviews. One thing that didn't go so well is the release of Halo Infinite's Forge mode. In previous Halo games, it allowed players to take control and create their very own experiences in the game. Hugely exciting for us creatively murderous types. Now... Unfortunately, Forge Mode is not available at Halo Infinite's launch. As part of a development update released in August 2021, the studio confirmed that Campaign Co-op and Forge Mode will not be available at launch. Instead, both modes will be added to the game as part of the seasonal post-launch roadmap. So unfortunately, as we focused the team for a quality experience for launch, we made the really tough decision to delay shipping campaign co-op for launch, and we made the tough decision for delaying Forge post-launch as well, which in my opinion, guys, I really think it was a mistake, not so much for the co-op campaign, um, but more so for Forge, like having that come coming out like later on, I think was a big mistake. I think that they should have just waited and had Forge mode and even the campaign co-op mode already at launch, guys, because then they could really strike while, you know, especially with all the uh, the great response that this game's got. Now, maybe they thought to themselves, well, maybe Halo Infinite, if it doesn't have an incredible response, we don't want to put all of our eggs into, you know, doing other things like Forge Mode and Co-op Campaign. We'll put those on the back burner, try to make the multiplayer experience and the campaign experience absolutely incredible. And if that was the plan, they definitely delivered on that. So I'm willing to wait, of course, for Forge Mode and the Co-op Mode. I just think that you have so many eyeballs now on Halo Infinite. It just feels like, man, if Forge Mode was there, it could be something really special. So let's talk, though, about the release date, guys, of Halo Infinite's Forge mode. So currently Forge is planned to release with Season 3. With Season 1 lasting 6 months and Season 2 lasting 3, it stands to reason that Halo Infinite Forge mode will release in August of 2022. Of course, this is all subject to change. And that's what I will say, guys. There's a lot of delays and things of that nature that come out because of, you know, the pandemic that's going on still at this point in time. August 2022, that sounds pretty reasonable, but I would say, guys, take it with a pinch of salt just because things can get delayed, especially throughout each season and such. If there's like bugs, glitches, and things of that nature that the team has to work on, you know, you want to give yourself enough time, make sure that Forge Mode releases and it's perfect. You don't want it to release where there's a bunch of issues and things of that nature. As any hardcore Halo fan knows, 
The Forge mode allows players to make their own custom maps and share them online for more multiplayer chaos, so it's only natural to see this return in Halo Infinite with full system scripting and sharing more craziness. Forge mode is an extremely ambitious part of Halo Infinite, and we expect it to be a hugely popular and important part of the game when it comes out nine months post-launch. And I agree. I think that it's going to be something really special, guys. I think that it's something that a lot of people, I think there's going to be specific content creators that just stay on Halo Infinite's Forge mode when it comes out. And I think that even pros and, and, and just, you know, casual gamers will enjoy Forge mode when it comes out as well. It's going to be a massive part of Halo Infinite. And if it's not, then we definitely need to tell 343 that they need to make this a, a major part of, of, the, of this experience because I think that's going to continue helping Halo Infinite move into that next generation of of Halo experiences, hopefully in the form, you know, like hopefully this is just the tip of the iceberg with Halo Infinite. Hopefully we get, we get continuations, you know, down the journey. Um, and I, I, guys, I think Halo Infinite has done an incredible job at this point, really exceeded expectations to say the least. Now, one of the uh, Forge Mode leaks that came out, a new data mine appears to show that Forge Mode could have a full scripting system, giving players more freedom than ever when playing online. So there's Quite some time to go before the release of Forge Mode, so in the meantime, why not take a gander at some of the Halo Infinite guides and such. And guys, what I will say is, if you guys are into Halo and Halo Infinite, guys, you guys can stay here with Zero TV because we have got a lot of content that's coming out related to Halo Infinite before Halo release to now, guys, a lot of Halo content you guys can check out all here on the YouTube channel. But we're going to continue talking about Forge Mode, guys. And as we get closer, I will be sure to give you guys and get, keep you guys up to speed as more information comes out. But let me know, what are you guys most excited about with Halo Infinite's Forge Mode? Let me know. And for more Halo Infinite content and videos, stay here with Zero TV. Resident Evil has become one of my favorite franchises, guys, and it really wasn't so much. It wasn't always like that. I was a I was a fan of Resident Evil, but it wasn't a massive fan. Once I got to Resident Evil 5, I absolutely loved and I was really starting to pay attention to the Resident Evil universe. I loved 5. I know some of you out there didn't like it as much as as I did, but that was really what got me into Resident Evil. Then Resident Evil 6 came out, and I thought that it was a massive step in the wrong direction, so I stopped really following Resident Evil at that point in time, because obviously I didn't like that you were almost like playing the campaign multiple times, just different perspectives and things of that nature. It's an interesting concept, but I didn't really like it, so I thought it was kind of a step in the wrong direction. Once we got to Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, it brought me right back in, and so... Um, Resident Evil 7, absolutely incredible experience, guys. One of the scariest games I've ever played. It was an absolutely unnerving experience, unlike anything I've ever played before. And what a great way to, to kind of move into. But some big shoes to fill, at least in my mind, coming in the form of Resident Evil, uh, Resident Evil 8 or Resident Evil Village. And... Wow, did they knock it out of the park. Resident Evil Village, guys, is definitely right there with Resident Evil 7 in my mind. Absolutely love those two games. They are on to such a great a trajectory here with the Resident Evil universe. I didn't know if they would ever be able to top Resident Evil 7, but man, they really got close with Resident Evil 8. Um, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm playing it, I'm on my second playthrough right now of Resident Evil Village, and I definitely am going to be able to give you guys more of, you know, did I think it was better or a little bit under or right there with Resident Evil 7. That being said, though, this leads us, and you guys know this by, you know, being a cut, if you're accustomed to my YouTube channel, you know, we talk about the future of games, and one of those being Resident Evil 9, which I think everyone knows that Resident Evil 9 is definitely coming at some point or another. So the big question here is, guys, should Resident Evil 9 be more like Resident Evil 7? Should it be more like Resident Evil Village? Or should it be like one of the other previous installments, like a Resident Evil 5 or Resident Evil 6? So let's talk about that, guys. So with Resident Evil Village being the, mo the newest title in this universe, we know that um, obviously, it's gone from a third-person perspective uh, to a first-person perspective, with that, which I think is really done well with the Resident Evil universe. It really puts you, you know, obviously, it really immerses you into the story and into the into the world. Not only did we get an incredible story with Resident Evil Village, but we also got Reverse, the multiplayer experience, which I can't wait to see where that goes in the future. 
I hope with continuous installments in the Resident Evil universe, we get updates and things of that nature with Reverse um, to really like just, you know, more and more ways to come back to the experience over and over again. Because a lot of times after you beat, say, you know, Resident Evil Village or one of these other titles, you beat it once or twice, you move on to other games because there's not really other game modes outside of the campaign. But Reverse has created this element where you come back to the experience over and over again. And I absolutely love that about, about Resident Evil and what came with Resident Evil Village. So let's talk about Resident Evil 9, guys. So obviously we know where we are with Resident Evil Village. Absolutely incredible experience, guys. We're not going to go into spoilers here, but should the next installment be more like seven or more like village and I gotta tell you guys I think it needs to be more like village here's why Resident Evil 7 Biohazard I thought was a very good like it, it was a really good game when it came to setting up where they were trying to go in the Resident Evil universe a very unnerving experience very claustrophobic in a number of ways and I think it was very good for what it was but trying to kind of rehash that or try to do something similar to that, I just don't think it would land perfectly. Now, maybe I'm wrong on that, but I just don't think it would land very well. I think Resident Evil 7 Biohazard needs to be, it needed to be its own thing. Resident Evil Village had elements of 7, but it made it a little bit more open. Um, but it still had the scares. It still had some very unnerving experiences within Village. A lot of people feel uh, or felt that 7 was so much scarier than Village, and I disagree with that. I think that Village was certainly not as scary as Biohazard, but I thought that Village was still had some very unnerving elements to it, um, and it was more character-driven, in my opinion. I thought that the characters that were in, the, in Village... Um, from the villains to the creatures to just everything that was kind of encompassing it, I, I just thought that it was more character driven. Whereas the character was more so like the house in a uh, biohazard, which uh, was very unnerving to say the least. And we, we talk about that all the time. So I think that Resident Evil 9 needs to do what Village did, where it took things from biohazard, some of those unnerving elements, but also brought in some more action elements as well. And I think you merge those two things together and you've got yourself a very good Resident Evil title. I think it needs to be more like that. I do not want them to go back to the third person perspective because then you're moving into the, the, the realm of more action over horror. And guys, for those of you who have watched my YouTube channel, you know that I am a massive horror fan. I love horror games. Resident Evil was always built as a horror, you know, franchise really that had action elements. I just don't want it to be an action game with some horror elements. You um, it, Obviously, the movies are, have more action, of course, than the horror. But Resident Evil, to me, was always, I mean, just the horror. It was always that, that pure horror that was the sheer terror um, of the, the world going to this type of, you know, uh, in this state. And obviously, it being just like an absolutely terrifying experience. So I would love them to stay in the first person, you know, realm. I think it's more immersive as well. They do such a good job with it, in my opinion. Um, Capcom has done unbelievable with, with Resident Evil. Never thought that it would get to, to this point where it was uh, this incredible of a story and just uh, the unnerving elements of it. So I would like them to kind of stick more closer to Village, and I think they're going to do that. Um, Biohazard was more the setup. Village, I think, is more the norm of what we're going to see moving forward in Resident Evil, and I am totally okay with that. The puzzles and things of that nature, there's been a lot of, you know, a, a lot of people talking about the puzzles, like they aren't very hard, they weren't difficult in Village, um, and I agree to it to an extent. I think that there needs to be some more puzzles, more things that you, you know, kind of relate to that of, uh, you know, previous Resident Evil uh, games. But I also am okay, sometimes the puzzles, guys, at least in my mind, sometimes it draws you out of the story. So you're focusing more on trying to solve a puzzle than you are on like the characters and the things that are actually going on within the story. So I was okay the way, the balance I felt that they had in Village. So all in all, the long, you know, the long story short, guys, 
I believe that Resident Evil 9 needs to go more in the trajectory of that of Resident Evil Village, kind of continuing off of that, building off of that momentum, Reverse being just introduced now to the world as the multiplayer experience, get that, get some more game modes involved with that, uh, bring in more characters, things of that nature, and really just start continuing to build out this franchise. We obviously had Resident Evil, Welcome to Raccoon City, the movie. The movies, guys, just have not really landed. Um, in my mind, I know a lot of you out there do enjoy the movies. They just haven't really landed very well, though, in my opinion. I think a lot of it actually has to do with the casting. I don't really like the cast that, they, that they've had, even with the original Resident Evil movies to even now. I just would have, um, I, I, I think that the movies have not done the, the series justice. I think it's good that they exist, obviously, uh, because it helps build the legacy, the lore of, of Resident Evil. But man, the games are by far and away way better, in my opinion, than the movies. And I cannot wait to see that, you know, continue moving forward. I'd love to see the next edition of Resident Evil. Maybe it be is a little bit of a longer story. I mean, I think you I clocked out at like right nine, nine and a half hours with Village, um, which was still an incredible nine and a half hours, don't get me wrong. I'd like to see a game that's maybe, you know, 15 to 20 hours long. That would probably probably be good um, just from a campaign perspective because I just wanted to keep on being in that world you know I didn't want it to end um, and so the same thing happened with Biohazard as well. Didn't want that story to end, but nonetheless, guys, those are, you know, that's what I feel. And this is just one man's thoughts. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you want Resident Evil 9 to be more like Biohazard or more like Village? Or do you want it to be like one of the original games, Resident Evil 2 or Resident Evil 5 or 6? Which one would you like them, what direction do you want Resident Evil to go with in the future? Let me know in the comment section down below and for more Resident Evil 9 content and videos stay here with Zero TV and with that being said everyone I hope you guys did enjoy this episode of the 8 Below show guys it's been absolutely incredible the support you guys have been giving me. Thank you so much for that, guys. I'm really excited about the content that's going to be coming out. If you guys are new, definitely subscribe. If you like the content and you get notified every single time that we have a new video that goes up, guys, I would love to connect with you, whether it's here on YouTube in the comment section down below or if it's on one of the three major social media platforms I'm on, that's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as Twitch, guys at zero underscore TV. Guys, um, I'm very active on my social media networks. I would love to have conversations with you guys about any of the topics, uh, just in the world of gaming, esports, entertainment. I would love to have real conversations with all of you guys about that stuff. And like I said, if you guys enjoyed this episode of The 8 Below Show, make sure that you leave a thumbs up, guys. It helps out the YouTube channel in a massive way. Subscribe if you're new. Stay positive. Just keep grinding. And as always, I'll talk to you guys all in the next one. Peace.